Hello and welcome back to the exciting conclusion of the volleyball player problem. So this is part two. In part one, we had a volleyball player diving for the ball, hits it right off the ground and it just barely made it over the net. Now we've got a Blue Devils player who's going to hit that ball right at the net level, spike it down, it's going to hit the floor and they're going to win. So the problem is she's hitting the ball at a height of 2.43 meters, which is the net height, with a speed of 12.5 meters per second downward at 50 degrees below horizontal. Where does it hit the floor? How far away from the net horizontally does it hit the floor? All right, so let's give this a try. What do we have? We have our picture. So we've got our net and the ball is hit downward. It's going to come down. We'll let the net have some legs to it. <laughs> so the ball's hit downward. It's going to hit and we want to know what this distance is. Okay, so we need our picture, we need our origin and our axes. I'm going to just use the standard coordinate system, plus y, plus x, and where's my origin? So I see three likely choices for the origin, where it lands here or where it starts. In this case, I'm, it doesn't matter which one we pick, I'm just going to pick this one. So it starts at the origin, that's my zero, zero. You, if you want to try doing a problem the same problem yourself with a different origin, you will find that you get the same answer. Okay, so we've got our picture, our origin, our axes, chart of variables. So our knowns and our unknowns. We've got two different charts because we've got two different directions and they are independent. We've got to keep track of them separately. So there's my six horizontal and my six vertical. Evinal eight. Okay, so what do we know? Well, I chose the initial position to be the origin. So I can say, okay, initial position horizontally and vertically, the origin. What else do I know? This is projectile motion, so we always know the accelerations. Horizontally, there's nothing causing it to speed up or slow down, so that's zero. Vertically, it's acted upon by gravity, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What else do we know? We know the initial height of the net. So if it starts here and the net is 2.43 meters high, then our final is negative, below, 2.43 meters. We want to know where it ends, so our x final is our question mark. And then, this is an angled launch problem, so we can take the information about initial speed and figure out what VIX and VIY are. So we're told the ball is hit with a speed of 12.5 meters per second, so 12.5 meters per second at an angle of 50 degrees below the horizontal. So we need to break that up into its components. Here's VIX, horizontal. Here's VIY, vertical. And we need to do the trig. So I'm using the shortcut again. This side, VIX, is adjacent to the angle. So that's my cosine component. So it's VI cosine times the angle. VIY is opposite the angle, so that's the sine component. Okay, so we can do the math. It's going to be 12.5 times the cosine of 50. And what do we get? We get 8.03 meters per second horizontally and 9.58 meters per second vertically. But we have to be careful because look at the direction those are going. We have the X component going to the left, the Y component is going down. So this is going left and down which means left, our initial velocity horizontally is negative it's going down, so our initial velocity vertically is also negative. All right. Anything else we can fill in? Well, if there's no acceleration, we know that both of these are the same. We don't know how fast it's going vertically when it hits the ground, so that's an empty, and then these two are the same. All right. So we want to know x final. X final is X initial, let's see if this will work. V initial T plus one half AT squared. 
And again, you have to keep it all in the same direction. You can't have an X component here and a Y component here. It all has to be the X's. Is there anything that's zero? X initial is zero, that goes away, and A is zero. I'm left with X final equals V initial X T. I'm looking for this, I know this, I need to know what my time is. All right, and having just done the previous part of this problem, I know that my other two equations in the X direction don't get me anything useful. All they'll tell me is that these two are the same. Well, I knew that. So I need to look at the vertical direction. Let's see if that'll get us the time. I don't have V final Y, so I'm going to use this equation in the vertical direction because that's the only equation I have that doesn't have V final. So Y final equals Y initial plus V initial Y T plus one half acceleration in the Y direction T squared. Is anything zero? Yes, that's zero. Well, doesn't leave me much. Okay, that uh, means it's a quadratic again. So let's put the numbers in. Y final is a negative 2.43 equals negative 9.58 T plus one half negative 9.8 T squared. So if we rearrange this, you should get negative 4.9 T squared minus 9.58 T plus 2.43 equals zero. So looking at this, I, I chose to bring this over to this side and then rearrange into the right T squared plus T plus no T. If you rearranged it by bringing it all to the left hand side and had this equation, it's the exact same equation. You'll get the exact same answer. Don't worry. Doesn't matter. So they're, they're the same thing. Here's my quadratic. If you do the quadratic, you're going to get two times a negative 2.2 seconds and a positive 0.23 seconds. So in the previous problem, we had two possible correct times. Why do we not have two possible correct times this time? So let's go back. This equation what this equation is doing for me, it's telling me the time at which I go from 0 to negative 2.43 in height. So it's how much time it takes me to drop 2.43 meters. Well, okay, I'm hitting the ball downward. So should there be two times when it falls 2.43 meters? Nope, just one time. So this one's easier. That's the correct physically reasonable answer. Got my time. Now I'm going to pop it in there. X final is, it's going to be a negative 8.03 meters per second times 0.23 seconds. If you do the math, you will come up with a negative 1.82 meters. All right, so I think that's my answer. Is that reasonable? 1.82 meters, that's about this, yeah, that's reasonable in terms of the distance. Negative? Should my answer be negative? Let's go back and look at my picture. This is another reason why the picture is useful. So I started here and I'm moving that way. Yeah, if this is my origin, I end up left of the origin. So I'd better have a negative x final. It tells me I ended up left of my origin, which is what I want. So the negative makes sense. That makes sense. The units make sense. Did we answer the question? Well, the question was, you know, how far horizontally from the net does it hit the floor? It hits 1.8 meters to the left of the net. We've answered the question. All right, good job.